gotten to the point where you're graining your hide. This is super exciting. And this is actually my favorite step in all of hide tanning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first get in our body because it's very easy to hurt your back. And so I want you to think about standing mostly with your legs slightly bent. I want you to have your stomach muscles slightly tensed and then your shoulders totally relaxed. I've seen a lot of people grain hides and they'll be like this. And then at the end of the day, they have a horrible headache. So try to relax your shoulders. As we're working, I want you to lock your wrists. I had a massage therapist in the very first class that I taught and she was doing this sort of thing when she was working her hide. And by the end of it, she couldn't move her hands and she couldn't work. So make sure that you lock your wrists. The movement is coming from up here. And when I say movement, you have to like really put some oomph into this. I like to set up the scraping beam so that the top of it here is reaching the very underside of my belly, a couple inches under my belly button. But I found that male bodied people tend to like it higher because they have a higher center of gravity and more strength up high. So now that we've talked about the body position, we're going to get into it. When you're scraping the hide, you need to put all of your strength in it. Don't worry about cutting the hide. Like you need to put everything into it. So Lewis, my friend, this is how much strength I'm putting into the hide when I'm scraping it. So you don't be shy here with your hide. You really want to put some oomph into it. So you want to orient this hide so that the neck is up. And because you've taken the tail off of the hide, the easiest way to tell that is that the hair generally goes down on the hide. So the hair is always facing towards the butt end of the animal. And so you don't have to be scraping the hide directly in that vertical position. You can be like doing a little bit of an angle here and there, making your triangles. The angle of my scraping blade depends a little bit on what hide I'm scraping. This hide is feeling like it likes a steeper angle. And again, just like with flushing, you're gonna have to experiment with the hide that you're working to see what angle you're gonna need to use. So I move my hide around a lot because I really like coming in and forming triangles. I start any hide just kind of somewhere in the middle of the hide because it gives me a sense of the hide. This is especially a good idea when you are beginning. In general, you want to be going in the same-ish direction as the hair. So when I start scraping, I just kind of go to the middle of the hide. It gives me confidence and lets me get to know this hide before I get into the harder parts. So I just kind of start in the middle, but with the neck facing up, and I just start removing removing material. So it's really important as you're scraping, what we're doing is we're removing the hair, but then we're removing the grain that is under the hair. It's really challenging to be able to see where the grain is and where the grain is not. So as you can see, as I'm scraping, I'm removing grain and that's what all of this stuff is. Oh, there's a tick that got frozen when I froze the hide. I'm glad that it is dead. So you can see in here, it's not, what we're looking for is not about the color, it is about the texture. So here, the hide is rough. And here, the hide is very slick. And so that's really the difference between where we have grain and where we don't have grain, is where we don't have grain, the hide is very, very rough. And where we do have grain, the hide is very slick. And I'm putting all of my oomph into this, and you should too. You really want to just scrape with all of your might. And you'll notice that my strokes, um, my strokes are like if I was mowing a lawn. So I'm stroking here, then here, then here, then here. And my strokes may be kind of long because I've just done this so much, but your strokes should be really short. It's important that you don't keep going past where you are removing grain because you will just be wasting 
your energy. And so it is very easy to remove hair, like I am right here, without removing the grain. And I can tell that there's still grain there a few different ways. One way is that if I feel it with my finger, it feels a little bit shiny. If I scrape it, I can get stuff off. So my like most surefire way of telling that I've removed all the grain is that nothing else will come off. So that's the best way. As I am scraping, I like to constantly form these triangles. So you can see how I'm scraping a little bit here. I scraped a little bit there. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm going to remove this triangle, which is very easy, relatively. As you're scraping, make sure that you're using short, very powerful strokes. It's kind of like when you were flushing. If you scrape past where that hairline begins, you are totally wasting your energy. So concentrate all of your energy in that little part right there in between where there is no grain and where there is grain and hair and really put your energy into that. Because if you're using long strokes, you're just gonna waste your energy and you're probably feeling, if you've gotten to this point, that your energy with high tanning is very precious. And so make sure that you do things in a way that's going to preserve your energy rather than waste it. It's really important to work from where there is no grain into where there is grain because it's really hard to dig into the grain at all, but it's especially hard if you're starting from hair to go through the hair and into the grain. So that's why I really like to just keep going with this area that I've already opened up. But in order to do this for the whole hide, this isn't really gonna be effective. Like I can't easily work from this area into over here because then I would be working sideways with the hair instead of down the hair. So I'm going to come up to the neck. I'm going to come about eight inches down from the top of the neck, enough room so that I can pin that neck with my body. And I'm going to turn that hide sideways. And then I'm going to get under the grain. And so I'm just gonna make like this stripe across the neck, which is gonna be like an inch and a half wide. And that is gonna be my access point to get into the grain for, for the shoulders and for the rest of the hide. turn it because I want to take that stripe all the way across the base of the neck and the top of the shoulders. In this hide, I probably, like the hair is slipping, but I probably could have soaked it just a little bit longer. It would have made the grain come off more easily. It's important to keep big clods of hair or flesh off of the beam as you're going because those can make it so you have a lot less pressure to remove that grain. And again, the grain is very challenging to remove. Like this is 
likely on your first hide, you're gonna leave some big patches of grain. And that can be problematic because it makes it a lot harder to soften the hide. So you really wanna focus on removing as much grain as possible. And whenever you are scraping, you should overlap your strokes. Now you can see here that I have opened myself up this beautiful passageway near the neck of the hide. And I'm going to use that to gain access to the remainder of the hide. Now it's really nice that I have um, that I have made that a good little distance from the top of my neck so that I have plenty of hide to tuck under my belly as I'm leaning up on the hide. And then it's gonna be really easy to get in here. Okay, so you can really see the difference here between where I have grain and where I don't have grain. But the way that you see it is not the color. Like what's going on here is that we've removed the grain and the texture is rougher. This is more smooth. But I can remove, I can remove hair and it still be a similar color. And the colors of the grain on different hides are totally different. So just rest assured, do not use the color as the gauge that the grain is gone. Also, something that um, people get tend to get really concerned about is as they're scraping, you'll end up with these marks like this. And the reason why you're getting those marks is those are the places where your, where your flashing knife entered your hide. That is totally fine. Those marks just indicate that there's less moisture in those spots than there are in the rest of the hide. Oh yeah, this, nice. So for those of you at home, this is a different hide and it was actually soaked the proper amount of time and it is, a relative dream to remove hair from and grain as opposed to the other one which was much more tough and each deer has its own different type of grain I mean it's kind of like humans like we all have very different qualities to our skin and so these deer are the same way and so not all deer are going to act the same bucking can really make it more consistent taking the grain off and that's why a lot of people prefer bucking but as i've said earlier i don't really like it myself but um but this one is just this is how it should be when you soak a hide it's just coming off so well and you can see what i was talking about with the color like right here this area has the grain removed this area still has the grain and this area has the grain removed, but it's a little drier. And you can see that this color is actually much closer to this color than it is to this color. So again, you're really looking for the texture. You're looking for the grain. Grain is what you see on shoe leather. It's what's shiny. And so that grain is really water repellent. And if you're making shoe leather, you wanna leave that grain on, but making buckskin is not compatible with shoe leather. And so that, um, that grain is really, you wanna get it off. And it's really a little elusive because you can easily take the hair off without taking off the grain. So you need to make sure that all of your strokes have a lot of overlap. See how, it's like you're mowing a lawn. Like if you didn't have your strokes overlap when you're mowing the lawn, you would have little strips of long grass in between all of your short grass, which would look very silly. And with the hide, not only would it look silly, but it would make it really hard to tan. And so I'm overlapping my strokes and really like I'm overlapping them like 50%. So here's one stroke, here's another stroke, here's another stroke. So I'm going over every area a couple times. Oh yeah, this is nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's very satisfying. So as you're tanning hides, you will likely get quite warm. 
it's really important that you remove the grain everywhere where you remove the hair before you move on to another area. And that's because if the hair is gone, it's really hard to keep track of where there is grain and where there isn't grain on your hide. And so I am really careful to go over every area and check it to make sure there's absolutely no grain before I move on. And I might seem a little uptight about the grain. You're like, okay, Natalie, I got it. I'll get my grain off, whatever. But you will see later on in the process how much of a difference it makes. And you will be using shorter strokes and you will be going much slower than I'm going here. And feel, don't feel any problem with that. Like most people that take my classes, the first time that they grain a hive, it takes like somewhere between two and six hours. Um, and it took me that long when I first started graining hides, but it's all about practice and you will be sore the first time you do this. Like no matter how strong you are, there's special weird muscles that go into hide tanning. So you will totally be sore, but after you tan a few hides, you will build special hide tanning muscles that will be so strong. <laughs> oh, yeah, so nice. And you can see that my fleshing knife is getting clogged up just like it did when I was fleshing my hide. And so what I do is I remove the hair with frequency. So this hide, is now almost completely scraped. So at this point, I'm going to turn the hide around and do the very hardest part, the neck. Depending on your hide, you might choose to cut your neck a little shorter than you left it before, because you'll notice how much more challenging it is to take the grain off of the neck than it is on the rest of the hide. Like basically the neck, if you left it full length, would be as much work to tan as half of the whole rest of the hide. And so that's why I always leave the neck for the last, because then you can make an educated decision about how much of the neck you want to leave. And you can see like how much more energy I'm having to put in and how much shorter my strokes are. And I want to really stress how as I'm stroking, I'm really tightening my core and that is helping me have a lot more power to put into this hide without messing up my back or like overdoing it on my arms. And that's especially important for female bodied people because we have plenty of power for scraping a hide, but it needs to come from our core rather than from just our arms. And yeah, this is just way harder to get off than the green on the rest of the hide. And it would be really easy for me to just remove the hair and not take the grain off like that. Oh yes, oh look how easy, very easy that is. But it's not really easy because I'm not doing the job at all because here is the grain. So we wanna really dig into that grain. I really enjoy taking grain off of hides. It's kind of like when I was in elementary school and I would put glue on my hands and let it dry and then peel it off. So gratifying. So I hope that you are finding this as gratifying as I am. It's really awesome. When you are removing hair from the edges, that's one time when you're gonna break the rule of having the hide go kind of tail down. Like here, I want to take these edges off and it would be super awkward to take them off like this. It's just super awkward. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the hide so that I can take off those edges and just come down on the beam like this so that the edges are going perpendicular to the beam. And again, as I'm scraping, off the beam, I wanna be gentle and not gouge into the beam really hard. So, way better way for taking the hair and the grain off of the edges. 
Graining hides that have been bucked is a little bit of a different story. You need to make sure to wear gloves because the alkaline solution can be hard on your hands. So here is a hide that's been in a bucking solution. Although it's so warm out now, it has been extremely cold. And so there's all sorts of ice on this thing. But wow. This bucking solution is a lot less strong than it was when we first put the hide in. The hide has really absorbed a lot of the alkalinity out of the solution. So I'm not worried about the solution going on the ground. It might actually be good for plants because our soils here are generally pretty acidic. But I do wanna wear gloves and I definitely wanna wear an apron. This is the stage at which I totally gave myself a horrible chemical burn on my belly one time from um, scraping a hide that I'd bucked in wood ashes, a solution of wood ashes. And so it's really important to be protected. If you like touch the hide once with your hand, just wash your hand, it'll be fine. But as you're scraping for an hour or two, you wanna make sure that you have gloves and you have some sort of apron. And your apron could just be a trash bag tied around your waist. So this hide has been bucked and it's a little easier to see where the grain is and where the grain is not. So again, don't look at the color because see, this whole area has a grain removed, but this color is very similar to this color. Look more at the texture. And I might have a little bit of subgrain. And that's again, the fail safe way of telling if you have removed all of the grain is you go over the area and see if anything else comes off. So I'm going over this and it's totally fine. And I'm finding myself going way too low <laughs> and my back hurting. So I'm gonna move the hide and move it up. I'm gonna frame myself some more triangles. And see, I have the tip of this triangle. I'm gonna remove that grain. And so this hide is really nice to grain. So that first hide that we were seeing um, w without being bucked was also just as nice. I would say equally nice to this one, but the second one was not. And bucking seems to create a little bit more of a consistently easy to scrape hide. So it just depends on whether you're comfortable using the chemicals, or whether you'd rather just soak it. Bucking also has the advantage of making the hide less smelly when it's at the ripe state. And by ripe, I mean that the grain is swollen. It's really easy to take off and it's easy to see um, because we're basically breaking down the chemical bonds that holds that shiny part of the skin onto the rest of the skin. And so, that uh, when you're using bacterial action with just soaking the hide, that bacterial action involves some smell. Whereas if you're using the chemical action of the, um, of the bucking solution, then you're not going to have that same issue with the smell. If you overbuck a hide, then the hide will be very rubbery. It will just feel wrong and weird in your hands. It'll, it won't easily scrape. You can see how easily this is scraping. Your hide won't necessarily scrape quite this easily. See how frequently I'm moving the hide around? But it should not feel rubbery. If it feels rubbery, then you need to neutralize your hide. You need to put your hide into a creek or into a bucket with a hose running in it, or you need to make a really slight vinegar solution to neutralize your hide. Um, but this hide is perfect. And so again, I wanna really point out the difference between grain no grain and grain. And right here, you can see I left a little bit of what I might call subgrain, just a little bit of grain right there. And so I'm going to remove that and I see one more patch of it right here. And I'm gonna remove those before I move on. And again, the color is not telling you anything because this color is the same color as this color and there's no grain here and there is grain here. It's all about the texture. 
and just the fact that it's another layer. Like you are taking the hide right now down to just the hide. You wanna, lead, you wanna take all of the grain away. And the grain is a really distinct layer. Like if you're dry scraping, then you are taking the grain off, but you're actually going into the hide a little bit. And that's why dry scraped hides are more fuzzy and wet scraped hides are more smooth because we're taking off the grain and we are getting right to the surface of the actual hide. And it's very gratifying. I love it. We are almost done scraping this hide. I hope that you are feeling like a hero because you are. So we're gonna finish scraping this. Just this last little bit of neck. Oh, and I wanna mention, it's really important that your flashing knife is dull enough. And if you, if your flashing knife is properly dulled, you should be able to scrape with all of your power and it's not going to dig into the hide. The only way that you're gonna be cutting the hide is if you go sideways or if you're working off of the edges of the hide. But if your flashing knife is too sharp, you can gouge and make holes and that's really a bummer. So if you find yourself doing that, make sure to stop and dull your flashing knife some more. So I'm gonna continue taking off this last little bit of hair. Notice I'm just cleaning off my off my tool a lot. And that's kind of looking peninsular. I think I'm just gonna cut that little piece off later. This hair may seem like some sort of nasty waste product, but it's actually a really awesome resource. I use this to mulch my fruit trees with. And so deer hair and hair in general is a really slow release nitrogen source. It also has the benefit of repelling deer because the deer are pretty skeptical of going near someone who has a bunch of deer hair around their trees. So this is an awesome mulch, keeps the deer away and feeds the trees all at once. So you finished graining your hide. It's totally awesome. You have a choice now. You can either continue, you can go ahead and put your hide in water as I'm gonna do right now to make sure the hide is super wet when you move on to the next, the next step, which is membraning. Or you could take this hide, clean it off really well in the water, and then you could put it on a car hood during in the morning so that the sun will dry out that hide and then you can scroll that hide up and store it. You could also just take this hide and put it over a porch rail or something like that to dry out, but then it's just gonna be in a really awkward like shape and really hard to store. So I recommend um, putting it on a car hood if you're going to store it. Congratulations. You have finished graining your hide. This is one of the two most strenuous parts of hide tanning. So, good job. <laughs>